All right, so before we end this section, we'll do a few more examples, this time um, looking at derivatives and integrals involving hyperbolic functions. We'll start here. Now, this first one, nothing complicated. Straightforward application of the chain rule together with the formula that we have here for the derivative of the hyperbolic cosine function. We simply have 1 over square root of, so the inside, so that x gets replaced by 3x minus 2 over 5, all squared, minus 1. And then we've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is simply 3 over 5. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, now this next one, if you pull out a minus sign, then we have 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. And it appears as though we can jump straight to the answer, right? Arctan. It's just one catch, right? Remember that this, this formula here, right, this is only valid if the absolute value of x is less than 1. Well, what if, uh, what if you want to deal with the absolute value of x bigger than 1, right? This is still defined, right? It's undefined at plus or minus 1, but, you know, we can work inside the asymptotes or outside the asymptotes. Well, um, actually, let me, let me move this over, okay? So if absolute value of x is less than 1, then we're in the domain for the inverse hyperbolic tangent function, and that's the derivative. Here's the funny thing. This is also the derivative for the inverse hyperbolic cotangent function, except the hyperbolic cotan function well, it's defined exactly in the places where the hyperbolic tangent function is not, right? Um, so there are vertical asymptotes here at minus 1, plus 1. In between the asymptotes, we're inside the domain for hyperbolic tangent inverse. Outside, we're in the domain for hyperbolic cotangent inverse, okay? Um, and just to kind of, you know, make a point of this, um, the, oops, the inverse hyperbolic cotan function is defined as the natural log. Instead of 1 plus x over 1 minus x, it's x plus 1 over x minus 1, right? You're just switching it around. Um, so up to an absolute value, the in, it's, it's the same thing on the inside. Okay. So what you do here is you actually kind of, you know, you split this up into two cases, uh, and you say, okay, well, this is going to be, it's going to be minus inverse hyperbolic tangent if the absolute value of x is less than 1, and it's going to be minus inverse hyperbolic cotangent if the absolute value of x is bigger than 1, okay? And it turns out you can, you can cover both bases here if you simply put an absolute value on the argument for that natural log, right? Um, if x is less than 1 in absolute value, then both of these are going to be um, positive, so the whole thing is positive. Um, if x is bigger than 1 in absolute value, um, well, if x is greater than 1, then the top is positive and the bottom is negative, so the whole thing is negative and you need to switch the sign. Um, if x is less than minus 1, then the top is positive, bottom is negative, again, the whole thing is negative, right? So the absolute value in that case where x is, absolute value of x is bigger than 1, this will be negative. Absolute value switches the sign, turns it to that. So either way, you're good, you're in business, okay? As long as we remember our constant. Okay, so that's kind of a cool result. This last one here, well, we look at this and we realize that it's 
pretty close to that, except I've got a I've got a nine and a ten that aren't in this in this derivative that we have over here. But we sort of we know how to handle that, right? We can we can write this as the integral of one over so working under the square root we're going to factor out a 10 and write this as 9x squared over 10 plus 1 okay dx so we have 1 over root 10 times the integral of 1 over so 3x over root 10 squared plus 1. And at this point, we, we do a u sub, right? So we say, OK, we're going to let u equal to 3x over root 10. So du is going to be 3 over root 10 dx. So dx is root 10 over 3. Um, so this is going to become 3 times the integral 1 over the square root of u squared plus 1 du, right? So I'm going to flip that. I get 3. I get root 10 over 3. Oh, sorry. This should be um, 1 over 3, 1 third, right? Root 10 over 3 times 1 over root 10. The root 10s cancel. Leave me with 1 over 3. And so I'm just going to get from this, I'm just going to get inverse sine hyperbolics. So I get cinch inverse of u. Um, oh, but u is 3x over root 10 plus c. Uh, so we could leave our answer like that, or we could come back and we could make this substitution, right? And so we could say, that's the same thing as, well, you know, I won't write it down, but we can put 3x over root 10 in here, put it in there, we'll have the answer. And a good exercise here to kind of convince you of the utility of these hyperbolic functions. Um, if we didn't have hyperbolic functions and we wanted to evaluate that integral, we'd have to do that with a secant substitution, right? So take a few minutes and try it. Try it with a secant substitution see how that goes for you, see if you like the result any better um, than what we got here using the, uh, the inverse for the hyperbolic sine function.